Welcome to this presentation on the brain stem. Uh, the brain stem is made up of three components, and these three components house very important uh, brain structures, such as 10 of the 12 cranial nerve uh, nuclei. We'll find the red nucleus here. We'll find inferior and superior colliculi, and a lot of other importance as we go through this um, uh, presentation. The first thing that I would like you to realize is what three structures make up the brain stem. And on this image, we see the most superior one, and that is the midbrain, this area here along and through here. Just below that, we have this expanded area called the pons. And inferior to the pons, you see this shaded area, and this is the medulla oblongata, and then it'll continue inferiorly as the spinal cord. Uh, in medical practice, uh, anatomy is seen through uh, imaging studies, and uh, imaging studies of the brain routinely will utilize, uh, because of their high quality resolution, magnetic resonance uh, imaging, and the three structures of the midbrain can clearly be seen in this sagittal MRI section. So first, here is the midbrain, right in through here, and then this prominent expanded structure is the pons. And then right below that, labeled for you, is the medulla oblongata. And then the spinal cord can be seen extending inferiorly uh, into the uh, vertebral column. Now I want to guide you through uh, the brainstem origin of cranial nerve nuclei. 10 of the 12 cranial nerve nuclei are housed in the midbrain uh, structures. And you can see several of those nuclei in this illustration. Here's an important concept for you to remember. Here we're looking at the origin, the brainstem origin of the cranial nerve uh, nuclei. And in this uh, illustration, two of the nuclei are housed in the midbrain, four are housed in the pons area, and then four of the cranial nerve nuclei are going to be housed in the medulla oblongata. So it's two, four, and four. Let's take a look at the two cranial nerve nuclei that are housed in the midbrain. Uh, first is the cranial nerve nucleus for cr cranial nerve three. That is shown here in yellow. Uh, this uh, gives rise to the ocular motor uh, nerve, and it's going to innervate several extraocular uh, eye muscles, as well as uh, constrict the pupil, and is an important uh, nucleus uh, for the control of lens accommodation so that we can uh, view objects that are close uh, to us. The second and final cranial nerve nucleus that's found in the midbrain is going to be that associated with the trochlear nerve. So we have cranial nerve 4 nucleus, and you can see it identified right in through here. From this nucleus, the uh, trochlear nerve will leave the posterior aspect of the midbrain, and you can see the trochlear nerve right in through here. The trochlear nerve will innervate the superior oblique muscle one of the uh, extraocular uh, muscles. This now brings us to the level of the pons as we work our way inferiorly. And again, remember that the pons has four cranial nerve nuclei. So now I want you to understand the four nuclei that are located here. And uh, the first uh, nucleus to take a look at is actually a paired situation. We're looking at uh, the trigeminal uh, cranial nerve nuclei. Uh, one of them is the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve that we see in through here, cranial nerve 5 motor nucleus. And then over here in blue, uh, we see the uh, sensory nucleus for cranial nerve number 5 uh, illustrated. Uh, the second cranial nerve nucleus that is housed in the pons is going to be that associated uh, with the abducent nerve, and this is cranial nerve nucleus number six, right in through here. The next is the cranial uh, nerve seven nucleus. This is the facial nerve nucleus. We see it uh, illustrated right in through here. 
And then the fourth and final cranial nerve nucleus in the pons is going to be that of the vestibular cochlear nerve. And so here is the vestibular cochlear uh, nuclear area shown right in through here. Again, these are paired. Uh, they're just visualized on one side uh, to keep this uh, illustration uh, simple and not very confusing for you. So for the pons, you're looking at five, six, seven, and eight. Those cranial nerve nuclei are housed in the pons. Now, this brings us to the uh, medulla oblongata, and again, four cranial nerve nuclei are housed here in this brainstem structure. Here you can see some of the cranial nerve nuclei, and uh, we'll take a look at the nuclei that are housed here. Uh, first, we have the glossopharyngeal cranial nerve nuclei. This would include the nucleus ambiguous, the inferior salvatory nucleus, and then down in through here, we see the solitary nucleus track, and then the nucleus itself is shown in through uh, here. Now we're gonna take a look at the vagal nerve uh, nuclei, uh, and some of these nuclei sh are shared with the glossopharyngeal uh, cranial nerve nuclei, so there is a division of labor or division of function. So, for example, the nucleus ambiguous does communicate, it does send out fibers through the glossopharyngeal nerve. And then the solitary nucleus has a dual function uh, as well with glossopharyngeal and vagus. And then we have the cranial nerve 10 dorsal uh, nucleus being exclusive uh, just to the vagus uh, nerve here. Uh, Another cranial nerve nucleus that would be more inferior to the illustration that we have here would be the accessory nerve uh, nucleus. Uh, this is associated with cranial nerve number 11. Lastly, uh, we have the uh, hypoglossal uh, nerve nucleus that's labeled here, and that would be associated with cranial nerve uh, number 12.